I'm Andrew Phillips, welcome to my channel. Today we're actually gonna have a fun treat. We are at the Air Mobility Command Center at the Dover Air Force Base here in Dover, Delaware. We're gonna be doing an overview of this awesome aviation museum. I'm actually standing right now inside the front wheel well of a C-133B Cargo Master military plane. So we're gonna check out all the cool stuff here, do a good review. I hope you guys enjoy it. Let's go ahead and get started. The C-133 was designed to be an air transport for America's large missiles. It was designed by the Douglas Aircraft Company and was first flown on the 23rd of April in 1956. This is the outside area where they have tons of awesome military planes. Then we're gonna be heading into the inside where they have more. They also have um, some other attractions inside as well that we'll be able to check out. This is a C-124A Globe Master II. This was the Air Force first long range strategic airlifter and it served for 25 years. It was a redesign of the C-74 Globe Master that was developed at the end of World War II. We're standing right now in the right wheel well of this C-124, and I'm gonna stand next to this tire here. It's wild how big these things are when you see them up close, as opposed to just on a runway or from the distance. And I'm standing here next to this. I'm five foot eight, and you can see here how high this thing is, and if I show it all the way down, these wheels are huge. Very big right here. This thing is coming up pretty much to my kind of the middle of my face if I bring it down here so you can see kind of on, on level here it's pretty wild C-54M Skymaster. Thank you. 
Here's a little piece of history. This C-54 behind me, and let me move so you can get a better shot of it, was actually used in the Berlin airlift, uh, which is a historic, historic event. But this actual plane behind me was actually used in that. And it's really cool because as I'm going through here and our, our tour guide has been excellent explaining stuff, but these planes behind me, each one of these has a history with it. Um, these aren't just, I thought that they were just regular planes that you could come here and look at, but no, each one of these, we have one that we're gonna take a look at that was actually designed by Howard Hughes. We're gonna look at that one. There's another one that was actually part of a famous evacuation of some troops during the Korean War where they had to drop some bridge fragments for them to assemble a bridge to get out. They were pinned down. And the last surviving plane of that mission is actually here. It's been restored. So we'll take a look at that as well. But just some very, very cool stuff. Very cool back here. We're standing in front of Air Force Two. This was the plane used for the VPs from the 1970s, I believe starting with uh, Walter Mondale going all the way up until Dick Cheney. It was also used occasionally for some of the presidents like Ronald Reagan and George Bush if they needed a, like a small transport and Air Force One was not available. Very cool stuff. There's a very cool C-141A Starlifter. The C-141A Starlifter was the first jet engine military plane to be introduced after the prop planes kind of were starting to fade out. The Starlifter was able to fulfill a vast spectrum of airlift requirements through its ability to airlift combat forces over long distances and also deliver those forces and their equipment either by land, air or airdrop and resupply forces and transport the sick and wounded from hostile areas to advanced medical facilities. I'm standing in front of an AZP S60 anti-aircraft artillery gun. This thing has an effective radar guided range of 20,000 feet. Let's check it out.
So we're heading inside the C-141, the Starlifter. We're going to check this plane out. And um, I know I'm going to say it throughout this video, but I'll say it anyway again. If you are in the Dover, Delaware area, you have got to check this place out. Awesome stuff. We're trying to get inside. They're actually having a little bit of a power issue, so it's closed right now. They have a C-47 that was actually used in the D-Day Normandy invasion. It actually dropped 101st and 82nd Airborne soldiers into Normandy on D-Day. So that is going to be some awesome stuff. I'm hoping they get the power up so we can go in there because that is going to be very cool. I think they also have a, a B-17 in there as well. But let's head inside this uh, this star lifter, see what it's made of. Very, very cool. Very cool. Check that out. It's even got that military smell. I love that. Here's all the fold down seats. Got the kids here too, so you're probably hearing them as well. There's Chloe from Chloe the Rockstar. Hi. And then we have our special guest with us today. We have Isaac from Games and Fun, who's actually taken a seat here in one of the more comfortable chairs on the plane. I actually like these ones. Headed down this way towards the front. Here's the cockpit area. We can't go in, but uh, we can definitely see it. So this is where pilot and crew and all are in that area. Very, very cool to kind of walk through this thing here. We're gonna head over to a um, C-130. We're gonna do the same thing, go inside that one. They have a few of these that you can actually go inside without a tour guide. Other ones you'll need a tour guide. But let's head over to the C-130 and check that out. This aircraft is capable of operating from rough dirt strips and is the prime transport for airdropping troops and equipment in hostile areas. The C-130 operates throughout the U.S. Air Force serving with the Air Mobility Command, stateside based, Air Force Special Operations Command, Theater Commands, Air National Guard, and the Air Force Reserve Commands fulfilling a wide range of operational missions in both peace and war situations. This is a C-130 
C-119C flying boxcar. This particular C-119 behind me actually has a cool history behind it, which is the case with a lot of the planes here. They're not just regular planes sitting here. They have some history you know, within, uh, within different wars. This one in particular was used during the Korean War. Apparently there was a situation where the military, the guys were pinned down, bridge was blown out, and they used, I believe it was eight, I think it was eight of these to drop pieces of bridges to the engineers on the ground so they could rebuild a bridge to get the troops out of there. And out of all the ones that were part of that mission, this is the only one left. And it was actually sent here. It had actually been neglected, I believe in California. It was just sitting rotting away. And when they looked at the tail number on it, let's head back there. And you can see it right back there, number on the tail. They were able to ID this and realize that it was actually part of that historic mission during the Korean War. So it was brought back here in pieces and restored. And this is where it's sitting now. Cool stuff. I'm standing here in front of this F-101B. This is what they call an interceptor. And basically we were just talking to a gentleman and he was saying that these were stationed here. They had them up and down the coast along with another model of jet as well. They were pretty much here. If there was any kind of threat, then they would send them up to do the intercepting. These are very fast jets. And the other one we'll head over there soon actually was armed with a nuclear warhead as well. But this one here is the F-101B. We have this one here on this side. We'll go ahead and take a look at that one. And this one here is the F-106A. This is the one that we were told um, was armed with a nuclear warhead if need be. So this was a very powerful jet. I believe it had 1600 miles per hour it could go. So this was stationed here, but when the C-5 showed up, they had to um, kind of ground them at that point because I guess the air turbulence that the C-5 leaves when it, when it lands in the case of an emergency where this would have to take off it could cause problems for this to be able to get up that quick. So the runway that it was using, they had to kind of put them aside at that point. Let's check out a couple more and then uh, see what else is here.
Standing in front here of the C-121 Super Constellation. This is actually some interesting history with this one here. Apparently it was used at one point in the Philadelphia area uh, on top of a restaurant and a diner, it kind of circulated around and then it was kind of dismantled and then they got it here. But the cool thing with this plane, it was actually designed by Howard Hughes. So it's got a little bit of a cool design to it. We'll get some close ups so you can see it. It has a very kind of sleek design for its era when you compare it to other other planes, which is kind of that Howard Hughes touch. I'm standing now in front of a B-50, which is nothing more than really a modified B-29 from World War II. This particular one is actually under restoration right now. They got it and it was just pretty much falling apart. But basically they took a B-29, modified it so that way it would be a refueling plane and removed all of the guns, things like that. But it did still have the, the bomb door, you can see that. I'm gonna go ahead and get some, some shots of it and check it out, but this is really cool. Um, as I said, this was a B-29 that was pretty much modified. At this point, it was left over from World War II. And what I'm being told is that the tail end was actually falling because it was falling apart, thus the reason for the supports while they're restoring it, and they'll, they'll get all that taken care of. Another cool thing is in addition to the, the prop engines, it was also refitted with some jet engines so that way it could keep up with, with the refueling with the more modern planes at that time. And then here on the ends of the wings, you have these refueling tanks right here. And if we come around, you can actually see the line that normally would be released. And you can see it right up in there. That's what would then come out and float out and then the, the other planes would connect to it to get refueled. So very cool. This is a C5A. This thing is massive. And uh, we're actually a going to get some more detailed shots of it inside as well. We're inside the wheel well of the C5 right now, and uh, this is very, very cool the way that this goes up. They were just telling us that the wheels actually, they come in and they turn, and you can kind of see here what we're looking at. It rotates, and then the wheels go up sideways, and you'll see this little track right here. Well, you have the rollers right here, which roll in right there. This is wild, standing inside the wheel well here of this C5. Have all the space in here, and you can see 
the wheels right there behind me. And then um, if we head over to the other side, you'll see that there's the other set. It has a total of 28 tires. 28 tires um, holding this plane up. Very, very cool. And then here's a better shot of the Minuteman. You can see it behind me right there of the missile. So let's continue on. As said already, highly recommended. You got to check this out if you're ever in the Dover area. Free admission, awesome staff they have here explaining everything. Um, and just a lot of cool stuff to look at, over 20 aircrafts. And since this is an active military base, you've got a lot of pilots training on C-5s, big planes coming in doing touch and goes, landings, takeoffs, all that stuff, uh, aborted landings, all kind of cool stuff. So definitely a fun all day event. Actually, here's a plane behind me and you can see it's coming in for a landing right there. And there it is. So he's coming in for a landing. We are standing inside of a C5 right now, which is awesome right here. We have this very nice tour guide who's explaining everything to us. Very, very cool. There are 73 seats. There is a kitchen and two bathrooms on this airplane right now. So Isaac, what do you think? I try not. Yeah, very fun blast. We're inside this uh this C-5 that's actually a historic one here because it was part of the Minuteman missile test. We'll talk about that a little bit later, but this is the actual one here that we're inside. It's the only plane ever to launch a Minuteman missile from it in a, in a successful test. So we're headed outside now. We're gonna go in, inside and check out the planes. Oh yeah, here's one coming down the land. All right, let's go, watch your step. 65 feet in the air. Wow. Six and a half story tall. 65 feet what? From um, from the ground up? Down to there, yes. And it doesn't look like it, but that wingspan of the T-tail is longer than that 707. Wow. Most yeah. Car, most commercial. This plane is uh, huge. <laughs> well, that's... That's the missile that can go inside of this plane. So behind me there is the Minuteman missile that can be launched from this C-5. And uh, very, very cool stuff. A historic thing too, since this is the plane that ever did it. You can see a better shot of it back there. And then there's the plane itself behind me, right there. And um, we're actually heading inside to check out some World War II history next, so that'll be very fun. And here is the Minuteman missile right here next to it. Thing is huge. Hard to believe that this was actually the real one was loaded inside this plane and successfully tested. Very, very cool. The plane is massive. Unfortunately, we couldn't see the second floor where the apartment and all the uh, amenities for the crew and all is. This plane's got multiple levels to it. In addition to the museum itself with the airplanes inside and out, you have this cool flight simulator that is held inside the hangar itself. However, due to COVID, this was not up and running, but we were told that there's many different airplanes you can choose from and you can try to fly them and land them. It's actually pretty cool. And what's not shown in this video is there's also a really nice museum store in case you want to pick up any merchandise or any snacks.
Outside is this well landscaped and nice Air Force Memorial where they're kind of honoring different squadrons over the years. There's some nice things to, to read as well, just kind of honoring all of that. Then there's also this September 11th Memorial where they have pieces shown there of the actual trade centers. And then you also have this concrete block, which is um, from the Pentagon itself. And then you have from flight 93, you have this stone from the ground where it went down in Pennsylvania. Here we have an exploded view of a C-5 wing that's actually next to the C-5 itself where you can kind of see all the supports and the electrical conduits and everything that kind of goes into to making that wing. That's actually pretty cool, pretty educational. And then here we have the engine barn where you can go inside of this, this hangar itself and they have various, various engines on display as seen here going all the way back to the early early years of the 20s and to more modern engines and you can see them all exposed and everything as you can see here is a turbo wasp engine right there and then in addition we have here this this huge engine from a c5 it kind of shows you in perspective this this thing is enormous and you can see just the size and magnitude of these engines and just all the complexity that goes into them very very cool and uh, interesting hangar to be in and just kind of see all of the uh, you know what makes these these engines what they are Outside is this air traffic control tower, even though it's not the one that's currently in use by the Air Force itself, it was an older one. And you can go inside of it and check out, as you can see here, the control. You can get an awesome view of the actual active runway and the active tower, which is there on the other side. This is a KC-135E. This is an actual photo of this C-47 called the Turf and Sports Special in action during World War II. We have this uh, C-47 behind me. We had to put our masks on to come inside, but tour guide's getting ready to take us inside of that one. And this C-47 was actually used, as I mentioned earlier in the video, in the Normandy invasion, dropping 101st and 82nd Airborne into D-Day. So this is very cool history. Behind me here, and I'll turn the camera, we have this B-17 Flying Fortress that we just took a look at. I'll show you some details of that um, right there. Beautiful, beautiful plane. Very cool. 
And then we have behind me, that is an actual airborne glider, um, which is really cool too. So we'll get some close-ups of all those as well while we're here inside. You see the invasion stripes painted there near the tail. Just talking to the tour guide here, apparently they had an event here a couple years ago and two of the paratroopers that are still alive came here and actually signed the tail of this plane, which is very, very cool. So we're gonna, we're actually getting to go inside of it now, which is, I'm excited for that. But you'll see right there on the star, you'll see their autographs right there. The two last surviving paratroopers that actually flew in this plane on D-Day signed that a couple years ago. Very, very cool stuff. This is a photocopy of the actual loading manifest from this plane on D-Day. You can see in the upper right-hand corner, June 5th, 1944, because these planes went out the night before the actual beach landing. And you can see the tail ID number, and this lists out all the paratroopers that were on the plane as, as well as their ranks. And what we're being told is approximately 60% of all paratroopers in these C-47s didn't even make it back. Yeah. Tail actually comes up and flies low. So on the ground, you do have the slant, but in flight, no. It's pulling me down. Yeah, it's on an angle. Because it's in the air, so it's like this. Wait, we're all going to feel it? Yeah, you guys, you don't think I want to trigger hunt, okay? You have to find something that's on the This is so cool. We're... I think that's the navigator area here. There's the radio. This is this is very very cool. Coming in here. Here's the cockpit. This is the cockpit inside of a C-47 that flew on June 6th, D-Day, dropping paratroopers into Normandy. Awesome. So we're walking down here, and um, you'll see here on the ground, right back here, that's the actual toolbox that was part of this plane in World War II. And the, the picture there is of the guy who actually used it. Very cool stuff. There's also some shrapnel damage from D-Day, and I'll get some close-ups of that. You can check that out, which is very cool. There's one right there. You can see that. And then here on the ground, there's a plate there and a plate there that were actually welded over some shrapnel damage. And then there's two right there, one here and one here. Very cool stuff.
This is very cool. We're gonna go inside the bomb bay, check that out. There's also the um, ball turret gunner. I will check that out as well. There's the bombardier in the nose right there. We're inside the bomb bay of the B-17. You can see up above me is a bomb. And then there's the hallway where you can walk through on this platform if you need to get through to the cockpit area back there. There's a cool inside view of the ball turret on the B-17. You can see how the gunner would fit in there. And there's a close-up of the armored seat. Here's the door that opens, and then here's where the, the gunner would sit. You have to be small, five foot seven or smaller, but that's actually armored underneath. You can see up in here. There's the controls inside the ball turret. Here's the tail gun on the B-17. This B-17 is labeled as the Sleepy Time Gal with the nose art, even though this particular one never did see combat during World War II. It was manufactured towards the end of the war. By the time it got over to Europe, the war had ended. So it was painted for the museum just to replicate the real B-17 called Sleepy Time Gal. The swastika markings as well as the bomb markings do reflect the actual bombing runs and kills that the real B-17 did have. This is a, an actual World War II glider used by the 101st Airborne, um, and maybe even the other Airborne as well, but my cousin was actually in the glider division with the 101st on World War II, so this is actually very, very cool.
Okay, well that pretty much wraps up this overview of the Air Mobility Museum here in Dover at the Dover Air Force Base. Highly recommended if you uh, get the opportunity, you will definitely love it. Please send me any questions, comments, I would love to hear from you. As always, I appreciate all the support. Please like this video, subscribe to this channel. I'll see you next time.